Hi folks, in this video I'd like to talk about replacing the three images in the info boxes and taking it a little bit further, maybe adding another row of images and content boxes um, and um, some things like that. So let's take a look at this right now. Some of the tips or points, these images right here, they are all the same size. Replacement images, same thing. They should all be the same size or same dimension, I should say, not size. That can mean file size, but the same dimension. Now, these are actually very large images. They're actually 1920 by 1080. The recommended minimum size for a replacement image is 360 pixels wide. Your images can be as tall as you want them to be. I do recommend, though, that you have all your all three images to be the same dimensions. So if they're minimally 360 pixels wide, as long as they're all the same width and the same height, they will display in a nice uniform row like this. You notice all the images line up top to bottom, left to right, and they look good. Now your replacement images, they can be taller, but like I said, as long as they're all the same dimension, they may display taller than what you see, but they'll all display the same height if they're the same dimension. Um, so yes, the height of the image is actually determined by the actual default image size. So you may have different image heights if you don't have the same dimensions for your three images. With that said, let's pop into Dreamweaver really quickly here. When we open up our index page, these images are located in the site, themed images folder, and right here in the backgrounds. Okay, and we can take a look at the little, if we have the properties panel open in Dreamweaver, you can see where the, by selecting the image, you can see here using the source piece where that actual image comes from. So all you have to do is put your replacement image into the backgrounds folder right here, and then you select your image, and then you use the point to file tool right here, and you can point to a different image just like that, and it replaces automatically. All these images right here, A through H, the section B, G, A through H, they're all the same size. They're all 1920 by 1080. That way they can be used in containers like this, or they can be used in the slider up top, or for background sections um, in the page, and we'll cover that in a different video. But your replacement image, just pop it into the themed images backgrounds folder like that, expand the folder, and that way you can use the select source tool right here and just go and change the image or link, well, that was the same one, uh, link to a different image just by dragging the source cursor over to and selecting the new image. Like I said, these are 1920 by 1080. Uh, you can use smaller images though. And the same with expression web, very similar. We're going to open up the page, scroll on down. Oops, I missed it right here. Um, select your image. Now, in this case, what you can do is you can just double click on the image and the picture properties pops up. And then you can right here, as long as you have, or long, as long as you've placed your image into the site themed images and background folder like that, a couple of ways you can do this. You can just simply change the name of the image you're linking to right here, or you can use the uh, edit or browse option. I'm just gonna click on browse, go to site themed images, backgrounds, and I'll select the different background image. We'll select this one right here and click open and okay. Now when you do that, here's the problem in Expression Web for most setups, and I wanted to sort of show this so we could show you how to fix it, is if you put a big image in a page like this using the picture properties, it's gonna put the image in the page at its default size, when really we want the container to help size it down, right? The container being the, the column that the image is in. We wanna make sure the image does not expand past its original column. In Expression Web, what we have to do is double click on the image again. This time we switch to Appearance and we unselect Specify Size and we click OK. And then it pops back down and allows the container to dictate the height of the image. And now you see the two images we have, they're the exact same image. One was really big, one was small before, and that's all we have to do to change it. To add more rows, Okay, to add more images and containers. Now these are designed for a three by three. All right, you could change it to a two by two if you wanted to. You can make it a four by four, or you could add an entirely new row. So let's take a look at those options. Let's go with, let's say we didn't want to have three images or containers. We only wanted two and we wanted them side by side. 
uh, what we would do here is we're first of all just going to uh, select the, in, the the container we want to remove. Just click on the image, and we want to flip to code view here. And I want to show you. Actually, no, we'll leave it in design view. Um, what we want to do is we want to select the column and delete the entire column. To do that, we select the image. We go down to the quick tag selector, and we find out where it says column MD4. So that's a column medium four. We want to click that to select the entire column and press delete on the keyboard. Okay, just like that. We're going to come back to this and sort out the width in a second, but I'll just show you an expression web. Same thing. We select the picture. This time we're going to go up top, but look for the column medium four. So starting at the right, moving over to the left, we select the column medium four. So it highlights the entire column and we press delete. Now, these won't look very good if they are side by side. So we have a couple of options here. We can select the two remaining containers. And now we're going to just sort of select the entire column and flip over to code view, like so. And we have it highlighted right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a class, OK? And we're going to steal it from this row right up here, this, this row of content right here. And that's the ML auto, ML auto, MR auto, which means margin left auto, margin right auto. So what we're going to do is we're going to steal this right here, plus a little extra space, and we're just going to copy it. And right after the fade in up, we're going to put our cursor, hit the space bar, and paste in the ML auto and MR auto. Same with down here on the next column of medium four. Okay, like that, and we paste. And now we're going to save, um, and we're going to preview this index page and make sure that uh, everything is starting to look the way we want it to look. We scroll on down, and look at that. Now we have two containers evenly spaced, right? Now let's say, for example, and the same thing, Expression Web, we're just going to select the column, go to code, and we're going to scroll up a little bit, copy this here, and just paste it in right after the column four fade in up. And we have to make sure that there's, yep, that works. And that's how we um, have things evenly spaced out. The design window is not going to show the spacing. It's only going to be displayed when we save it and preview it in the live browser. However, you may not want to do that. You may want to have the containers take up the full width of whatever's remaining. So it would show a larger image, but take up the white space. To do that in Dreamweaver, we're not going to use the ML auto or the MR auto. What we are going to do is where it says medium four, we're going to make that a six. And we're going to make this a six because the columns that we use are based on a grid of 12. So when we have whatever our column numbers are, when they add up to 12, that means it will take up the full width. If they don't add up to 12, there's going to be white space. As in before, we had column medium four and column medium four. Well, that only adds up to eight. So that means that there's going to be extra space because we're not using the full 12 grid. Um, and if you're not sure how the, the Bootstrap grid system works, you can Google that one because the actual Bootstrap website has some really good details on that. But I just want to show you what this looks like now when we switch over to using the full width. Oh, did I save that? Let me go back here. Right, so now we've set it to be a medium six, still not quite showing up exactly the way we want it. Earlier, I mentioned that the minimum width for an image is 360 pixels. We now need to go and change, if we're going to go to two columns like this, we need to change one final piece, and that is the width that we assign. Like I said, 360 was the uh, width that we had decided is the minimum width to use. Well, we need to bump that up a little bit more when we are using just two columns. So to do that, we're going to open up our base style sheet and go way down. So we're going to go into our site styles, our base.css, and we're going to go way down to about line 24543. So if we open up the style sheet, we'll do a control G in Dreamweaver or Expression Web and type in 24543. 
four, three, to get us approximately where we want to go, which is the info container right here. See the max width of 360? We need to bump that up a little bit more. Um, now you can make it, if we're going to go with two columns, 560 would probably be, uh, be a good size as a minimum width. We'll just save this right now, and I'll just quickly refresh it, and let's just see how that looks. That takes up, or that looks a lot better now. Um, we can also do the opposite. Um, in this case, we can add a, another column instead of removing a column. So to add a column, I'm just going to undo my changes here and show you what we need to do. So we can change this from three columns to four columns. I'll just use a different index page here as an example. So we'll just preview this really quickly. Uh, we have three columns. Let's say we want to go with four. So what we're going to do is basically duplicate the, duplicate the last column and then change the column width. So to duplicate a column, we just sort of put our cursor on this column medium four right here, the very last one. And yeah, it is something that needs to be done in code view, unfortunately, but we don't need to know HTML, just how to copy and paste at this point. So we're going to select this column medium four. It selects the opening and the closing div tag. So what I'm going to do, and this is sort of how I keep my things clear in my head, is when I want to copy a div tag like this, is I want to separate it out from the rest of the content. And I do that by just hitting the space bar a bunch of times to give myself some room to work. Once I've separated out, I just double click on the top div tag to make sure it selects the bottom one as well. And then I just select the entire thing with a little space above and below and I paste it. Now this is going to, this is how it's going to look as it sits. It, it's actually going to double over to a new row down below. And you could actually continue on with that process by just copying and pasting your columns like so. And if we save that, we'll see that it adds three more to the bottom. All using the same image, we're just going to go and replace the image and the text afterwards. But what if you wanted to have four columns instead of three? So this is where, and we're going to remove those last two that we just added. So we just have a total of four. Remember I, earlier I talked about the grid system? We can change the fours over to threes and make them columns of three and we have four columns of three that equals 12 that means we're taking up all the available room and if we go back and refresh our page we'll see that we now have four columns the image is resized perfectly to fit and then you can continue on like that